everybody. I'm Tony Sharp. I'm the founder of Substation 33. Substation 33 is an electronic waste recycling business in Logan in Queensland. Um, Substation 33 collects, disassembles, repurposes, makes money and things out of electronic waste. But our DNA, what we, what we exist for is what we do. So like the previous presenter, one of the biggest problems we've got in Logan, and really across Queensland, and probably across Australia, is the uh, lack of opportunity for people to experience workplace situations, and that's a dying, dying uh, so the big players don't want to take on people and put them into uh, their workplaces because of the risk and all the other stuff that's associated with it's horrible. And that is even more applicable to a person with a disability. So at substation we have seven mini substations scattered around the local special schools and in those mini substations the young people with disabilities learn how to demanufacture electronic waste on site in grades 9 and 10. In grades 11 and 12 they come to the substation and they pull apart the electronic waste in their factory and do funky things like build electric bikes and 3D printers and extruders and, and do all sorts of weird things like that. Um, when they leave school in grade 13, it's the big gap here for, for young people where they don't have any, they haven't quite worked out what they want to do, and that could be grade 13, 14, 15 or 16, but certainly grade 13, they don't know what they want to do. And some stage they come back and they can volunteer, and they get more and more work skills and they get more and more development in themselves. They understand more about other people and they work with a grade of voice population. Um, Every year, we disassemble 100,000 kilograms of electronic waste. We create about uh, 7,500 hours of paid employment, and those paid employees provide about 25,000 volunteers. So they're big numbers, uh, 350 people through the building last year. Some of those people were there for 40 hours a week, some of those people were only there for four or five hours a month. Um, but we're continually looking for improvements. We're unsure about one of the, one of the problems that we have at substation is we've got this collection system that goes on, people ring in and telephone in, and we drop the bins, and they pick up the electronic waste. But we're not data collecting on anybody. We're not data collecting on what we call our customers. We're data collecting on our individuals and our people, and we know the numbers of those people. We, can, we know good news stories about those people. We can see transition in those people, but we're not doing anything for our customers. So potentially the people in this room today that are going to drop electronic waste, we're not interfacing with them at all. It is just purely a commercial transaction where we pick up electronic waste and we bring the electronic waste back with the car. No money changes hands, but nor does any traffic, nor does any emails, nor does any reward system. So what we're trying to do is maybe build some sort of reward system. We know the numbers. We know that a thousand kilograms of electronic waste will produce 2.5 hours of paid employment. Then we'll supervise, you know, 75 hours of, of volunteer work. But we're not reporting it back to people. We think we think that people want to give to the substation for a couple of reasons, or one or two reasons. One would be an environmental solution to the electronic waste. So the less than 3% of what we collect ends up in landfill. Everything else we repurpose, rebuild, recycle, or sell as a commodity, so the steel, the plastic, the aluminium, and all that, or the commodity, what we call it. Or they could be doing it for social reasons. So they could be doing it because they know they have a disability, or they know somebody is struggling in the workplace, and they want to give them the opportunity to gain work experience. So what we want to do is to have some sort of portal, an app, or something where we can give that information back to people. We can use it as a collection tool as well, so that people can collect into it. We can give that to the driver, the driver can go on there. Then when we get the weight, then we can report back to the people, back to our customers, about what that weight of computers or televisions did for a group of people. And we can also attach in some new good news stories in there. There's little Johnny turned up to work for the first day um, today, and he's finally wearing his shoes without being told. Those sort of stories, people want to know. They might want to hear a really good news story about a young person who, when he was at school, at the local city special school, he never spoke to anybody. He didn't speak to anybody at school, he never spoke to anybody at home, and he was physically destructive to the family home. When he turned up, he, did, he's, he went, transitioned through our system at school, doing a bit of e-waste, at substation doing some e-waste at school, and at substation as a volunteer. And he used to walk around the building, he'd go to everybody, which in his words, his language, was how do I pull this apart? Everybody in the building would say to him, Chris, you would like to start talking to us because that's no good. So this is, uh, we're talking now, uh, about eight months on. Uh, Chris now has uh, got enough words in his vocabulary. His words have been so meaningful that he goes and he's going to voice his lunch. He's now got public transport and he catches public transport to work. He's now got, got a part-time job mowing lawns. Uh, but more importantly, Chris runs a local disability service that comes down and does some work for us volunteer work. He runs that table because he knows how to talk to those people. So Chris has made, I want to be able to tell those stories to our potential customers. Um, so that's my challenge to you guys. Awesome. Thank you.